Hello, I am Rahish. Today I am discussing about the Missile Man of India. Today, October 15th, 2021, is the 90th birth anniversary of the man who gave India the power of Agni. The man who brightened India more than Agni and the man who lit a divine Agni, a divine fire in the heart of 1.3 billion Indians, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Dr. Awul Pakir Jainulabaddin Abdul Kalam was born in Rameshwaram, Tamil Nadu on 15th October 1931. Dr. Kalam was born in a poor family. His father was the owner of a ferry boat on which he took pilgrims back and forth between Rameshwaram and Dhanushkodi. The childhood days of Dr. Kalam were full of hardships. He had to sell newspapers in order to support the family. Dr. Kalam's favorite subject was mathematics and he also had very good grades in that. Dr. Kalam first studied at the Rameshwaram Elementary School and a higher secondary school in Ramnathpuram and then at St. Joseph's College Tiruchirapalli and the University of Madras where he graduated in physics, then at the Madras Institute of Technology. Dr. Kalam, after his education, keenly wanted to join the Indian Air Force as a fighter pilot, which was his dream, but he couldn't, as he was ranked ninth, and there were only eight positions available at the Air Force. After that, Dr. Kalam was very disappointed. Then he joined the Directorate of Technical Development and Production, which came under the Ministry of Defense as a senior scientific assistant with a salary of 250 rupees per month in 1958. In 1960, Dr. Kalam joined the Aeronautical Development Establishment of the Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. There, Dr. Kalam headed a small team which made a hovercraft named Nandi. Dr. Kalam was its inventor and pilot. That hovercraft had the capacity to carry 550 kg of payload. Dr. Kalam gave many VIPs a ride in that. One day, Dr. Kalam was asked to give a ride in that hovercraft to Professor M.G.K. Menon, the director of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, TIFR. Professor Menon was very happy with Dr. Kalam and invited him for an interview to join the Indian National Committee for Space Research, INCOSPAR. At the time, INCOSPAR was just trying to start the Indian space program. Dr. Kalam was selected and he became one of the first scientists of the Indian space program. Later, Dr. Kalam with some other Indian scientists were sent to US for training at NASA when Dr. Kalam was at NASA's Wellups flight facility, he saw a painting depicting a war using rockets and the site which was actually using rockets was Tipu Sultan's army against the British. Then Dr. Kalam held many different positions in and outside of Inkospar. In 1969, Inkospar was reformed as the Indian Space Research Organization and Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, Chairman ISRO, started an ambitious program to develop the indigenous satellite launch vehicle 3, SLV-3 rocket to launch the Indian satellites. And Dr. Kalam was selected as its project director by Dr. Sarabhai. Dr. Kalam steered the program through very difficult paths and finally in 1980, India successfully achieved its own independent launch capability. After that, Dr. Kalam was promoted to the position of Director Aerospace Dynamics and Design Group at the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center so that he could configure India's future launch vehicles. After that, the Government of India moved Dr. Kalam from ISRO to DRDO to lead the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, IGMDP. In IGMDP, five different missile systems were developed, namely Prithvi, Agni, Trishul, Akash and Nag. Agni missile, which was conceived as a re-entry experiment vehicle, was Dr. Kalam's dream project. Prithvi became India's first indigenously developed ballistic missile and Agni evolved into India's nuclear capable intercontinental ballistic missile. Other systems in IGMDP are also crucial for the Indian armed forces. 
Many other missile systems which were later developed had many technologies derived from the IGMDP. In 1992, Dr. Kalam became the Secretary DRDO and the Chief Scientific Advisor to the Prime Minister. He was the first to be appointed as the Chief Scientific Advisor. In 1998, India conducted the Pokhran 2 test, testing five different nuclear bombs in two days. Dr. Kalam was his Chief Project Coordinator. In the same year, Dr. Kalam with cardiologist Soma Raju developed a coronary stent named as the Kalam Raju stent and in 2012 developed a tablet computer for healthcare named as the Kalam Raju tablet. In 2002, Dr. Kalam was sworn in as the 11th president of India. Dr. Kalam served as the president till 2007. It was at this time that Dr. Kalam fulfilled his childhood dream of flying in an IAF fighter jet. People of India wanted Dr. Kalam to have a second term as the president, but Dr. Kalam wanted to return to his teaching career. After completing all these national tasks, Dr. Kalam returned to his teaching career. Dr. Kalam was awarded many awards both from within and outside India. Dr Kalam was awarded many honors from the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Scotland and many international awards. India honored him with Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan and Bharat Ratna, which are India's highest civilian awards with many others. United Nations had also declared 15th October as the World Students Day on Dr Kalam's birth anniversary. Books written by Dr Kalam are also one of the best sellers of today. Dr Kalam's autobiography Wings of Fire has been translated into around 13 different languages such as Hindi, Marathi, Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, Odia, Gujarati, Bangla and even Chinese and French. Dr Kalam was not just a president. Dr Kalam was people's president. Dr Kalam was not just a scientist Dr Kalam was the missile man of India Dr Kalam was not just a national hero Dr Kalam was a national inspiration in summary Dr Kalam was and will forever be a symbol of India's unity integrity and liberty thanks for watching my video